Well, hello there, CrossCart fans. Welcome to the show. Uh, today, we're going to be following the rules even further, and we're going to put a windshield or net on the front, and we're going to make doors. I've been dreading this, but it's got to be done, and I figured out a slick way to do it. So, we're going to hopefully see if that works, because nets are expensive, especially when you have nets custom made. They are super expensive. So, what I did was I bought a roll of stainless steel, one inch gapped, 18 gauge, uh, whatever this is, steel net. Now, we'll start with the front windscreen. Um, La Hose Industries and their speed car extreme was a huge motivation for me to even start making these. And they just zip tie these in place. Now granted, they have a body going over the top, so that's completely acceptable. But we want to make this removable. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a mount that we can either have the screen for racing or we can have a windshield. So it's going to require more than zip ties, obviously. And that all starts with more doggone tabs. All right, so I think the trickiest part of this is going to be number one, mounting these lower tabs, but still being able to get this dash out. Pretty sure it'll just slide out. And secondly, not making the mounts too bulky or too in the way or too ugly. I don't want it to be ugly. That's the main focal point of the cart. So it needs to be done with some style. I think we're gonna go with the method of trial and error. All right, so I've got my little tabs made. My little bits. What I'm gonna do, or attempt to do, is run this right across, but I need a section that I can align so that they're straight, they're pretty. Just take it right there, tack it in, and then see if I can get the dash out. If I get the dash out, these are gonna be our mounts, and they're gonna be done, and it's gonna be that easy for the lower mounts. Success! Dash came out uh, easily, so now I'm just going to weld these in or actually just add another tack and just keep driving on. All right, now for the top, I'm thinking we do something like that. It's not going to obstruct your view because this tube has a thickness, not just on top, but as you're looking through it too. So even if you do see a little bit of it, it's going to be very minimal. Well, we could have cut our pieces a little better. Got about eighth, eighth, three sixteenths gap. But good chance to show off my highly adequate welding skills. All right, so I guess uh, let's just start with the screen here. Get it in place. I have uh, a couple extra blocks. Now this could be really extravagant, or it could be really simple. I think I might take the simple route. Um, just pick two bars. Go across here, tack all these into that. Same with down here. Ooh, maybe a big circle. Oh yeah, more scrap time. So all the hole cuts I made in that sheet metal are about to pay for themselves. Look at that. That couldn't work out any better. All right, so I've got my discs trimmed and cut for the appropriate size. Well, that turned out incredibly well. Our mounts are done, now we just have to trim it. Well, and there you have it. One race screen to keep the big mud chunks out of your face. But if you're driving one of these, you'll probably be out in front, so you, uh, you won't need to worry about that. Ha <laughs> ha. All right, I am super incredibly excited about this. Uh, I've been wanting to do this for a very, very long time. Um, I tried it once, but I failed because I'm an idiot and didn't know the difference between Lexan and acrylic. Uh, so to give you guys the heads up, polycarbonate sheet 
also known as Lexan, is the bulletproof stuff. Acrylic is uh, scratch resistant, but it cracks as soon as you look at it. So imagine trying to drill a hole in something that cracks when you look at it. I was not successful. Um, I ended up getting 0 0.093 inches, which I, I think is like two millimeter. I don't know. You can go thicker, but I wouldn't go much thinner. Thicker than this, the price goes up, the shipping goes up, the size is harder to find. Uh, you can get this at the or at Lowe's or Home Depot or Amazon. It's kind of readily available. And this is going to be super easy to mount. Do you know why? Because it's clear. We just have to mark our holes, figure out how we want this to sit on here. And I'm going to leave these wings on. Um, Sierra cars, they put windscreens on theirs because they do ice racing too, and they're awesome. Uh, they are pretty much the pinnacle of these, in case you wondered. Turbo Hayabusa engines, uh, Sedev, six speed sequentials, just ridiculous awesomeness. Back to the point, they put a little bend here so it's kind of a wind deflector so you don't get a Venturi effect with that wind coming right in the cockpit. It's pretty brilliant. So I'm going to uh, take that little cue from them and we'll mark this, drill it, mount it, admire it. There you have it, mounted up perfectly, just a big square bunch of protection. Now I am definitely going to try to bend this down and then I'll trim it out. See how it looks. So my little heat gun was not doing the trick. So I decided to break out some cargo straps and my map gas. All right, so that worked uh, amazingly. Uh, our creases are gonna be pretty doggone ugly, unfortunately. Uh, hopefully I didn't burn through this protective film on the outside. All right, so here it is, windscreen installed. Um, it looks amazing, and it's gonna be super functional. I am so excited that I finally got a windshield on here, hands down. So on to the downfalls. Um, I burned it. Using a torch burns Lexan. Those of you who have worked with Lexan probably knew I was going to burn it, and you're just laughing at me. That's fine. I'm, I'm learning, and hopefully I'm learning for all of us so we all don't have to make the same mistakes. That's the whole purpose of this. Um, I'm explaining confidently the things I know, and I'm testing out the things I don't. Hopefully I do the logical things that anyone would do. <laughs> When you heat it, use a heat gun or don't be crazy with your torch and heat inside your bend, not outside your bend. I was heating it from the side and my bend is, is off a lot. Number three, definitely get thicker than what I got. Um, if I replace this, it's going to be with like quarter inch Lexan. This stuff isn't super heavy. It's pretty flexible. Um... I think a quarter inch would, would take care of a lot of the, yeah. Uh, it's going to need weather stripping. I'm sure any sheet's going to need weather stripping. It's just too big of an area. Moving on to the doors. All right, so for the doors, I've been working on this for a while. And what I originally was going to do is use 3 8 inch brake line because you can get this stuff in a long roll for super cheap. It's weldable, but it's it sucks. It's impossible for me to get the straight parts straight, to get the bends exactly where I want them. And I have a brake line bender or fuel line bender, and it just, it did not come out well. So I've been frustrated about this. I've been looking at nets. I bought Polaris 1000 uh, just nets to see if they fit. They don't fit. It's frustrating. And then I figured out an awesome way I could do it. So this is half inch, 0 0.035 metal rod. And it is very weldable because it's steel. 
I like steel because of that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut it to length, frame this out, put some of our 1 inch 18 gauge uh, chicken wire mesh net, whatever you want to call it, tack it in all around and we'll have a functional door. Actually, I've been crazy excited about this. Who wouldn't be? All right, so I've cut all the pieces into a rough outline, and this is exactly why I wanted to do it this way. I can nudge all of these, mark them for the fine trimming, and then I can just tack them right in place, and they're going to fit perfectly. Now, this one, since I added this piece to kind of surround the dash, I had to put a little bend in it, but that's super easy. You just put it in a vise and give her a little bend. This isn't super thick and it's just holding that mesh. The strength comes from it sitting on the chassis. Yeah, we'll get it trimmed up and tack it. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and tack the top half, leaving the bottom bar the only variable. Um, that way it's locked in, and we just have to trim these two pieces, fit up the bottom piece, and it should be a perfect fit. So I forgot to adjust my water for the uh, thinner wall and just burned right through it on the first one. <laughs> so don't forget to uh, turn down your water before you do this. So now let's take off the tape and see if she holds together. Looking good so far. Outstanding. Outstanding. So now I'm just going to pull it off, finish up the welding, and then we'll get the, uh, the hinge set up. All right, so the frame is taped in place, and now it's time to add the hinge. Now I have larger diameter tubing that I'm just going to align with that, and I got some bolts that will fit tightly into this, even thread it, so maybe we won't need a nut. Wouldn't that be slick? So I'm going to cut this accordingly, divvy it up into three or four equal parts. The bottom part I'm going to tap for this size thread, whatever size that is you decide to use, so that we can just screw it in. All right, so I've marked it in three equal sections. The door is going to be the outside sections and the chassis is going to be the inside section. And I've marked it where the threads start. So that way I get all these threads in that bottom piece now I'm using 3 8 16, and I don't remember the tube size, I'm sorry, but you'll figure it out. All right, so we've got our three pieces cut out. The first two I just drilled out to 3 8 for the 3 8 bolt, so they just slide on. And then the third one is tapped so that it threads in. So now we have a hinge set up. Neato Cheeto. Now, um, the door is the light part, so it gets two welds, and the frame is the strong part, so it just gets one. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to offset this and just use filler weld to get it on there. All right, so once you get your hinge welded in place, then you just check to make sure your door opens smoothly. 
There you go. Now I hinged it in a way where it'll just stay open, and then you can just check and make sure it closes smoothly. All right. This came out awesome. Now it's just time to put the mesh on. All right, so now it's just a matter of getting your screen on and just uh, tacking it in place and then welding all those little tiny things without burning through it. Should be super easy. All right, there we have it. This is your primary entrance door. I probably should have done the other side first because the second one always turns out better, but eh, why not? Look at that coolness. Pretty slick. So Now, the point of this is not necessarily just to keep stuff from coming in. It's to keep the driver from sticking his arm out to try and catch himself if he's going to flip. So that's it. Wash, rinse, repeat for the other side, and you will have yourself two doors. Or you could do it like a Piper Cherokee. Uh, they've only got one egress door, and that seems to be just fine with the FAA. No big deal. Now, I haven't put latches on here yet. There's a reason for that. Uh, I didn't know how to make a latch. I didn't know how I was going to do it. There's a, a few different options out there, and I just needed to get this on here first so I had something... Uh, tactile to mess with before I came up with what I was going to do. Um, what I'm leaning towards is a spring-loaded um, locking mechanism or a flip-down that... I, I don't want it too complicated. The rule book states that you have to be able to reach it from the inside or outside, which could make this kind of tough. I don't know how much how much we're going to lean on those rules. Um, or how I, I definitely don't want it to be complex. That's the thing. I do not want it to be complex. All right, so a quick overview on mounting mirrors. Um, I just got these eBay specials. I believe they're for Miata. They came with mounting plates. I didn't use the mounting plates. I just ran uh, six millimeter bolts with a lock nut on the back side. Uh, this is two millimeter aluminum. And something to watch out for is the door. When you open and close the door, it's going to come forward and up. Ask me how I know. So before you drill the holes, uh, double check your clearances. I'm not going to walk you through this. <laughs> I, I hope you don't mind. 